issuing certificates using the Certification Authority MMC. Okay, so here we are, we're back on our issuing CA and what I've done is created a default web page and I've dropped it into our www root directory. Now currently we don't require any sort of security to access the page. So if we open up Internet Explorer and then we navigate to our website, now quite clearly we don't need anything special to be able to view this page. So let's go and change all that and what we'll do is we'll configure IIS to use certificates to secure our website. So we'll close this down. And what we'll do is we'll go and open our IIS snap-in. So we'll go to Start, Administrative Tools, Internet Information Services. And we'll just expand this to make it a little bit easier to see. Now we'll expand out our local computer and we'll select our default website. So we'll right-click and select Properties. And then we'll come up here to the Directory Securities tab. Now our server will require a certificate. So we'll come down here and we'll click on Server Certificate, which starts up the Web Server Certificate Wizard. So we'll click Next. Now what we need to do is assign our IIS server a new certificate. So we'll leave the default option here which is to create a new certificate and we'll select next. Now we have two options with regards to our uh, certificate request. We can prepare our request now but send it later. So this will be like uh, saving it out to a file and then of course we can jump back onto our uh, intermediate CA and then import the certificate that way. But as our CA is online we can send the request immediately. So we'll check this option and then we'll choose next. Now we need to give our new certificate a name. So we'll just leave the default, which is default website, for our uh, particular demonstration here. And of course down here we can select the bit length of the key all the way down to 16,384 bits, which would take quite a while to, to crack that one. And of course we can also select any uh, cryptographic service providers that we want to use for the certificate. We'll leave the defaults here and we'll choose next. Now we need to provide our certificate some information about our company. So I've just pre-filled this in here with the test company and testdomain.com. Generally speaking, you'd put in your company name here and any organizational unit or department perhaps that you have or what this server will be assigned to would pop in this field here. So we'll accept that and we'll choose next. And now we need to type in a common name for our site. Now as our site is on our issuing CA, which is called this CA issue, and we'll leave it at that, we'll choose next. Now we need to provide some geographical information about our certificate, so we'll uh, scroll all the way up here to the top, and we'll choose Australia, we've already pre-populated the state of New South Wales and the locality of Sydney, so we'll choose next again. Now what port should our certificate talk on? Well, 443 is the standard SSL port, and we'll use that. Next we can select what certification authority we're going to issue our request to. So our default here is to issue it to ourselves, which is our uh, caissue.testdomain.com, and we'll choose that, we'll select next. And then of course we just get a summary telling us what we're about to uh, do here, so we'll choose next, and we're now done. Now the next step we need to do to actually use our certificate is to click on the edit button. Now as we want some security, we're going to check this box up here to require secure sockets layer, so we're going to do that, SSL. And then we'll also check the require 128-bit encryption. Now under our client certificates, we have three options. We can ignore any client certificates. Well, that's not what we want to do. We can accept them. Well, yes, we do want to accept our client certificates. But in the essence of security, what I'm going to choose here is to require a client certificate. So anyone who's uh, trying to access our web page here that does not have a client certificate will be denied access. Now what we can also do here is enable client certificate mapping. Now this enables us to map our certificates, client certificates, to any Windows user account. So we'll check this box and then we'll click on Edit. Now we have two tabs at the top here. We have one to one and many to one. Now selecting one to one means that we have to map every individual certificate to a separate Windows user account. And conversely, if we use many to one, we can map a whole bunch of different certificates to one single user account. So we'll use that option and we'll come down here and we'll select Add. Now what we need to do is provide a rule. So we'll give our rule a new name. In fact, we'll just call ours new, new rule. We'll accept the default and we'll select next. And now we need to specify the criteria that we're going to use to match for this rule. So we'll select new. Now creating these rules is kind of out of scope for our uh, video on certificates. This is more an IIS thing. So I'll make this pretty basic. So what we want to do is have any user who's currently in our users OU on our domain controller to have access to our website. So what we'll do in this subfield, we'll select OU, and in the criteria field, we'll select users. And now we can click OK, and we can click Next. And now we need to provide a user account with which we'll actually map client certificates to. So it's this user account that'll actually be accessing the resource or our web page. Now, for the sake of uh, making this easy, what I'll do is I'll browse using our Active Directory 
uh, object and we'll just use the administrator account. Now of course in your environment you probably wouldn't want to do this. What I'd suggest you do is go into Active Directory Users and Computers and create a new account which will be used to access this website. So now we just have to enter in a password for the administrator account and we'll click finish and now we enter our password in again and we'll click OK. Alright now we can see our new rule has been created so we'll click OK again and we'll just click OK and OK out of this. And now what we'll do is we'll go back to our client computer and see if we can now access the website. Okay, so here we are, we're back on Bob's PC, so we'll go to Start and we'll open up Internet Explorer. We'll just close this. And what we'll do is we'll navigate to our CA issue as we did before. And now we get a message that says we have to view this over a secure channel. So what we'll need to do is come back into the address bar and type in HTTPS. And then we'll hit Enter. And we can see that we're going to view a page over a secure connection and we'll just say OK. And now we can see that yes, we can in fact see our certificate page. All right, so let's, how do we know that actually uh, our certificate really did anything then and that we didn't just have to type in HTTPS? So what we'll do is we'll close this down and we'll come back to our certificates here and we'll right click and we'll delete Bob's certificate. And now we'll go back into our Internet Explorer and then we'll come back in here and type in our HTTPS and we'll hit enter and we can see yes we're going to go over a secure connection we'll click OK now this time we see that we're forbidden to have access our page because we actually require a client certificate so there we can see a valid example of using a certificate on our certificate server to uh, lock down access to a particular resource alright well let's go and take a look at another method of getting a client certificate and that's using an MMC so we'll close this down and we can see that we've already got our certificates MMC open now you'd probably expect to be able to jump straight into our personal certificates folder that we have here and add your new certificate. And you're partially correct, but if we do this now by right clicking on uh, certificates, selecting all tasks and then requesting a new certificate, we just get a big fat error. And the reason is we don't actually have a CA hierarchy which has been imported here yet. So what we need to do is go to our intermediate certification authorities and we'll right click on here, select all tasks and then we'll select import. Now this brings up the certificate import wizard, so we'll click next. And we'll need to specify the file we wish to import, so we'll click on the browse button. And what we'll do is we'll navigate to a path on our issuing CA. Over here I've uh, entered in the path of CA issue slash C dollars, followed by the name of the certificate, so we'll select open. And then we'll select next. Now we'll leave the default setting of place all of our certificates in the following store, which will be our intermediate CA. And then we'll choose next, and then we'll choose finish and we get a message telling us that our import was successful. So now if we expand this down here, we can see that yes, we did bring along our issuing CA, but by bringing that along, we also brought along the intermediate and the root CA. But let's double click on our issuing CA, and we can see that we actually do have an error. But the error is not really with our issuing CA. In fact, if we come over here to the certification path, we can see the error in fact is here with the root CA. Let's go and take a look at why that occurs. The problem is, our root CA has come along with for the ride and it's come along and been imported here into our intermediate certification authorities, when realistically it needs to be in here in our trusted root certification authorities. So what we need to do is we'll come across here and we'll just simply drag and drop the CA root into our uh, trusted root certificates. We'll just get a message saying, do we want to add it? Well, yes we do. So now we'll double click again on our CA issue and we don't actually get the red X anymore. If we come up to our certification path, we can indeed verify the certification path hierarchy all the way back to the root again. So we'll click OK. Now we're still not quite done yet because if we were to go back to our IE and try to access this website again, we still have a problem because we don't have a personal client certificate. So now what we can do is we can come back here to our personal certificates, right click, select all tasks and then request a new certificate. Now this brings up the certificate request wizard, so we'll select next and we've got two choices here. We can select a basic EFS certificate or a user certificate, which we'll do. Now this time why don't we click on the advanced button and have a look at some of the options we have there. So we'll click on next. Now at this point we can choose whether we want to uh, have a different cryptographic service provider. Now we'll just accept the defaults which is a key length of 1024 bits and we'll choose next. And where do we want the certificate request to go? Well it's going to go to our issuing CA and we'll accept that default so we'll choose next. And now we can just type in a friendly name for our uh, certificate if we like and we'll just call this Bob and we'll press next and next again and we're done. 
So let's go back to our Internet Explorer. I'll just cancel this here. And we'll type in HTTPS, CA issue. Whoop, I spell it correctly. In fact, here we go. We'll just hit enter. We can see we're going to go over a secure connection. We'll click OK. And again, we can now get back into this page because we do have a valid client certificate.